thank you to everyone who supported my band's lyric video by leaving a comment. We greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who want to still have the replay cast, no questions asked, by leaving a comment on that lyric video, the offer ends this month after November 2018. That offer will cease. So please leave your comments and get cast. Thank you guys so much. We greatly appreciate you. What is up, guys? It's Mr. Still Your Girl coming at you with a Forge Alliance Forever replay cast. Yes, do not adjust your computer screens. Do not send angry letters to YouTube. I have to fix the uh, sound because it is so loud in my ears. There we go. That is so much better. So don't fix the... Uh, don't yell at YouTube. Don't fix your your computer screen because that this is this is what's happening. So I've had requests to do a Forge Alliance Forever cast. It's happening. So I want to remind everybody that Forge Alliance Forever is a different game than Supreme Commander 2. They are played differently and they are greatly different games. One that doesn't make any of them better does not make one better than the other, all right? So if you like one game, great. If you don't like the other, that's fine too. You don't need to go into the comment section and say that my game's better than your game because reasons. Um, that's really, really lame and boring. I have had to talk to people about that many times. You may say, wow, that is really um, lame of you to complain about that, but I'm sorry, it, it happens way too much. Apply changes, please. It happens way, way too much, guys. So just letting you, putting it out there, and we're going to get on with this replay. How I found this replay, I went to Forge Alliance Forever. I went to their replay vault, and I searched for 1,800 skill level players ladder matches. So as you can see, 1,800 and 1,763 well, 1807 and 1763, respectively. So, you can see who the players are. And I do like this resource system better than Supreme Commander 2 I, uh, replay. I like this re replay system better. I'll be honest. That is one thing I do like. But it's a different game. I'm, we all have to get over that. They are different. So, um... Let's introduce the players. I'm going to get in a split screen to do that because you could do that. Isn't that neat? Do I hit home? Yes, I do. So I'm going to introduce the players that way. So that way we can get started. By, uh, started that way. All right, so I'm going to hit that play button. Here we go. So here are the players to my, on the left-hand side, which I am circling, we got Sarah spawning to the north as the blue UEF commander doing a land factory first and his or her opponent spawning in as the red UEF commander dropping down a land factory first and then double air it looks like Sarah's doing a whole bunch of energy generators and air them themselves so we got two air and a whole bunch of energy coming right up for both players well one player a lot of air and let's speed this bad boy up because it is the base building phase take notes guys and as you can see, the uh, the engineers are going on an attack move. They are sucking up that delicious, yummy, yummy mass. That is, that mass, yo, definitely want to do that in this game. It is a very, very, very important thing for you guys to understand to do. So, yeah. Now we got a scout going on, a couple scouts going on for both players. So we can watch, I think we're done watching the build order, so I'm going to put bring it down to a single screen. There we go. We can see both players are being scouted at the moment. They can see all the things, and then we got an uh, interceptor being built for both players. A little air of battle going on. Ooh, we could see... Swackle taking out an opponent's air unit. Now let's see how the teams, how they are doing on eco. Swackle, could, this, you could see his vision. And you could see his 
mass income is higher. He needs to start using it more. He, I'm sure he will. Um, you can see it as at 2.9K, 3.1K 3. production. And we got Sarah with 3.0K production. Needs to start using that mass. Needs to start getting more energy. So back to the observer. Now, we could see transports being taken out here. Did a transport get blown up? I do not think so. I think that the transport survived. As you can see, that transport is trying to come back in and get a second use. No, not at all. So the transport dropped off and en some engineers over here. Very nicely done there. I like that. And did Sarah, yes, yeah, Sarah dropped off a bunch of units over here too with the transport. So that is a big thing in this game, transports. And a tank versus a couple of engineers, that is not going to go favorably for the engineers, of course not. Interesting place to drop units. If this works out, this could be a very powerful position. Definitely want to get out that point of fence before anything else, but because one tank and an engineer is going to be able to deal with this very quickly. Now, we got some Lobos in here dealing some damage to some structures. They do a lot of damage to structures. Got some Strikers in there busting some heads. And we got a drop off of a bunch of Engineers. A battle going on here. We got that point defense. That plasma cannon is up. A couple of Lobos will make short work of it. Most definitely. And these engineers are building a uh, building a nice little base right here. That is a good thing. The more bases in the Bermuda Locket, the better. Most definitely. So we're going to put an end to that and go back to seeing what's going on here. This is probably the most interesting battle happening at the moment. So the match is almost 10 minutes gone. And the, the players are now getting into the sea. That is a key thing to control this center area here. If you get a bunch of cruisers with some uh, missiles, you can shoot them over the base. Oh, I like this. We got one tank in there stopping these mass pumps. That is quite amazing uh, and it looks like Swackle is pushing some Lobos and some MA-12 Strikers to take out this little base over here but this base is looking pretty strong and able to take on this army it looks like Swackle has overran here and this engineer could suck up the delicious yummy yummy mass and since they are both the same faction you could build on the wreck of your opponents and that will be built 50% faster and 50% cheaper and remember this game has adjacency bonuses so that's why you see oh my goodness this army is pushing right to the heart of Sarah's army that is going to be very strong very powerful if they get through they could get into this energy generator farm here but we got some Engineers hastily putting up some plasma cannons. So that wall of plasma cannons might be able to stop this army. But there are some Lobos here. Now. Oh goodness. That plasma cannon was taken out very quickly. Now you can see the energy generator adjacency bonus right there happening. Oh my goodness, Sarah is overrunning over in the bottom right-hand corner. The southeastern side is being overran. And the northeastern side has a breakthrough. As you can see, Swackle has broken through, doing as much damage as it can. He's getting some units in back in that energy farm. Definitely go after those energy generators. Oh, well, they're being taken out. There's T2 energy 
coming out very quickly. Yeah, it looks like um, Sarah is in T2, has T2 mass, T2 power. And the battle rages on right up here. And as you can see, Swackle has gotten did a gun, the damage and range, and he's getting the nano repair on his ACU. So I think he's anticipating this army to break through, and this is done. This is gone. He knows that. That uh, Plasma Cameron Cannon's going to do some damage, going to keep that force back the best he could, but it's not going to be able to really completely do it. Now we got a nice naval battle. This battle up here north is multi-fronted. It's also it's navy as well as land. Now, like I said, these units are breaking through. We got some T2 units. We got some pillagers, pillars, excuse me, heavy tanks, trying to force these units back, not successfully whatsoever. Are those lobos really attacking those frigates? Yes, they are. Let's bring the speed down to two, shall we? Very well done there. And we see an air battle over here as well. And Swackle is pushing his commander in to attack those ground units. That is going to be a lot of veterancy. As you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, that veterancy rate is going up for Swackle's commander. 22 kills on that ACU. Almost there. A couple more would put that veterancy all the way up. Now, let's take a look at the bases very quickly. We've got some T2 triads underneath some shields. Very nicely done. We've got an energy storage. We've got a T2 mass pump with a bunch of T1 mass storage, which is bringing that mass extractor up to plus 9 mass. We got some T2 energy generators, very nice, and a, third, and a T3 power generator coming online for Swackle. We got some torpedo bombers. Those storks are doing some work, pushing back those Thunderhead class and that Governor class cruiser. Those cruisers are incredibly powerful in this mass, on this mass, this this map. You can park this bad boy out, out in front of your opponent's base. And they will just do massive damage because their range is quite good. Look at this. These units are going to bite the dust. Boom! A whole bunch dead by... Oh my goodness, that governor is so strong. And we also got a destroyer. Where did that destroyer go? I guess it got destroyed. Haha. <laughs> pun, no pun intended. We got some subs. Now, we got a battle happening here with some pillars in front. And we got... A shield unit. We got a parashield. Very, very nice. Gonna protect some units. That's gonna be very strong. And we got some plasma rail guns being rail guns? No, plasma cannons being put down. I would like to see some triads backing these bad boys up. Let's take a look at this base real quick. We got a T2 air factory being supported by a fusion reactor. That's 105. What's being built? Is that a stork? I think that's a stork. I, yes, that's a stork. So it's minus 105. Can you imagine how much would be minus if that wasn't there? Now, how is that... Oh, there's the triads. That's what I like to see. That We got some T2 mass pumps supporting the factory. We don't have mass... Uh, we don't have the mass storage around the mass pumps to give them that adjacency bonus. As you can see, up in the top right-hand corner, Swackle is running away with the mass production at 145k per second. I think that is... Is that correct? Maybe I'm reading that wrong. We got Maybe it's 255 per second and 149k total, I'm thinking. You know what? I've been reading that wrong the whole time. I think that's the totals and per second. It's right next to it. But that is almost double Sarah's mass production. We got 133. Um, 
not quite as good. Floating some mass here. Not floating as it's overflowing, but we need to start using that mass more, most definitely. So, back to the battles at hand. Now, that ACU is in lots of trouble here. Swackle is being surrounded. Are those T1 units? Yes, those are T1 units. I think... Oh, yes, we got a two-star ACU down here. That is a lot of regeneration. 62 per second. Got the third star of Veteran C. That is a powerful ACU. 68 seconds. 80, 68 hit points per second on that ACU. That, that, there's no way a bunch of T1 units are going to break through here. Is that commander going to be a four star? I'm thinking so. Yep. Four star, how many hit points? That is 74 per second. These units are just right here as a blockade. That's what I'm thinking these guys are good for. I would like to see... Oh, yes. I would love to see these flapjacks get in there and just wreck stuff. Just destroy these rail guns. Uh, plasma cannons, excuse me. Now, I like the Valiant Class Destroyer play. But we got, yeah, we got a bunch of Valiant Class Destroyers. I like the Bulwarks. That works out very well. The uh, Governor Classes do very well against them because, unless they're moving, of course, they're worthless. And we got some Air Superiority Fighters. So we're in T3 Air Territory for Swackle, most definitely. And we got a T1 Naval Factory sitting here doing nothing here for Swackle. I like it. I would love to see it be T2, and it's happening, guys. We've got an engineer helping that bad boy out. And we would love to see some governor classes built right here. That would, I think that would be GG. Does Sarah see it? No, Sarah does not see it. Now... We got some broadswords coming out here for Swackle. Doing some damage. Air superiority fighters taking out a whole bunch of interceptors. They are very, very strong. They are the highest level of air you could get in this game. Except for experimental, of course. But experimental, I mean, goodness. The wasps are very strong against the cyclones. As you can see, a small number of interceptors... Uh, excuse me, air superiority fighters against these interceptors are doing some good damage. Now look at all those... Those bombers going against that battle cruiser. Battle cruiser operational, baby. Uh, that battle cruiser has nice range on that blue laser of death. Two blue lasers of death. Very well... Very nicely done. And it's got anti-missiles. So the enemy's governor class are much less effective. Is that anti-missiles that I saw? Maybe I'm losing my mind. Well, I can't check now because it just got sunk. Well, that's a bummer. Now we got a T3 Naval HQ. I'm loving it. And I think Sarah has just called... Called it quits. So Sarah, very well played there. Sarah just called quits and said goodbye. So very well played there by Sarah. And very, very well played there by Swackle. There is Swackle's ACU. You can see that gun on him. It is massive. Let's see if Swackle... Let's see what Swackle has on that ACU. Why, my goodness, why did I do that? There we go. Now Swackle has... There we go. We got the Zephyr Amplifier. And we got the Nano Repair System. And that is it, I think. We don't have the Shield Generator. We don't got the Tactical Nukes. That would be incredibly deadly. Uh, or Nor do we have the Shoulder Guy things. Or Teleportation for a UEF Commander. What? It's like I said, this game is much, much different than Supreme Commander 2. So anyhow, 
Very well played there by Swackle. Thank you for coming back and playing this game again. I think Swackle has been gone for a while, but here he is in his UEF beauty, the beautiful UEF ACU. Man, he is so close to a mountain, so I can't really zoom in on him. That makes me sad. But I'll zoom in on him the best I could. There is his beautiful ACU. Very well played there on, on Bermuda Locket. We have a four-star ACU with the Zephyr Cannon and the Nano Repair System. So it really helped this match, How helped Swackle win, was his control over the western side of the map and keeping his enemy busy on right there at his enemy's northern spawn point. And getting into Tech 3 Air and Tech 3 Naval really, really did cause his opponent to be pushed back. So Sarah was able to maintain most of the control on the eastern side. However, lost control due to the broadsword attack. So the Tech 3, what would you call that? Tech 3... Uh, Gunships did some good work over there. And uh, let's see, that is only T2. Yeah, there's the T3 air units, the wasps chilling. And we got a spy plane, the Blackbird. That is a nice looking plane. And we got the fusion reactor. So I do enjoy this game, guys. I enjoy both this game and Supreme Commander 2. So you could like both if you want. And there is Swackles, T3, mass pump given plus 27 mass per because of the mass storage units around there. That is the great thing about this game with the uh, adjacency bonus. So uh, 26 minutes into the game, Swackle came out as the victor in this ladder match. So guys, like this video, subscribe to my channel, favorite it because that helps me out. And if you guys want to see more Forge Alliance Forever, you got to comment. you got to comment down below and let me know. If you don't let me know, I'm not going to know. I'm not going to be able to respond, and I'm not going to be able to know that this is what you want. Because let's be real with each other, guys. Supreme Commander 2 is doesn't have that many as many players. So if you guys want me to continue doing this, let me know. But I'm still going to do Supreme Commander 2. Don't feel don't feel worried about that. But they may be more Forge Alliance forever if I get comments asking for it. Because I like to cater to the community and what is going on. So, But I, I've been doing Supreme Commander 2 for about, what, four? Going on five years now since 2014. So I think it's okay if I do other games. So let me know if you like this game. I like it. Hopefully you do too. And Supreme Commander 2 is not going anywhere. Not for a little while. Unless the game just suddenly dies. So... Uh, yeah, comment down below and tell me what you think. Hopefully you like the cast. Say something nice about the players. Say something nice about me. And go to my band's lyric video and comment down below. I will even cast a Forge Alliance Forever uh, replay if you do that. You have until the end of November to get this video out there. I mean, to get that uh, comment down there and give me that replay. Otherwise, I can't do it because... It has to, I have to put an end date to it. Otherwise, I'll be doing random replays um, throughout until, you know, forever. And I don't want to do that. So anyhow, guys, I have a Patreon. If you want to support me monetarily, feel free to do so. If not, that is not at all, um, what would you call that, necessary. But if you want to, I would greatly appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. I think I'm at that point. Share with your friends, family, and foes because they need something interesting to watch as well. And as always, everyone, GG.